All right, geographers, the time has come to talk about what you need to do before you take that first dreaded FRQ. In this video, we're going to focus on the FRQ portion of your unit test. But don't worry, I'm also making another video that goes over the multiple choice section as well. So make sure you subscribe so you get notified when that video is posted. All right, now in order for you to ace your first FRQ, you need to know the basics. FRQ stands for free response question. For AP Human Geography, a typical FRQ will have seven parts and will be worth seven points, one point for each part. There are three types of FRQs that you might see on a unit test or the AP exam. The first is an FRQ that does not have a stimuli. Oh, and in case you didn't know, a stimuli or a stimulus is any visual or database source provided with a question that you'll need to interpret to answer the question correctly. For AP Human Geography, this can be a map, a chart, graph, table, image, satellite photo, or infographic. Now, right here you can see an example of what an FRQ with no stimuli might look like. Notice there is a prompt, then you have seven parts to the question. Again, each part is worth one point. Now the second type of FRQ that you might see includes one stimulus. Again, we can see that it still has seven parts to answer, but now comes with a stimulus which will be needed to answer some or all parts of the FRQ. Then there is the last type of FRQ which has two stimuli. Again, we can see that there is still seven parts. When answering any of these FRQs, realize that there's often multiple ways to answer many of the parts of the FRQ. For example, if we look at the rubric for the 2024 AP exam, we can see that there was five different ways to answer part A and 16 different ways to answer part B, with both A and B only actually requiring one answer. Hopefully knowing this reduces some of your stress for your first FRQ. Just remember to focus on what the question is asking and don't worry about trying to have that one perfect answer. Now on the AP national exam, you will have to answer three FRQs, one of each type, but for your class, it'll most likely be different. So make sure you talk to your teacher to see how many questions you will have and which types of FRQs will be on your test. All right, now I wanna draw your attention back to the example FRQs. Notice how each question is being asked. If you're paying attention, you can actually see that all the FRQs use task verbs. In fact, we can see that for AP human geography, every FRQ will always only use these task verbs here, with each task verb requiring you to answer a question in a specific way. Which honestly is great, because this means you can study and review the set task verbs before the test, allowing you to better understand exactly how the questions will be asked. Which I know might sound weird, since I'm sure you'd rather study the content for Unit 1, but trust me, understanding each task verb goes a long way. Now for time's sake, I can't do a deep dive on each of the different task verbs verbs. But if you do need help reviewing, I made a breakdown video that goes over all the task verbs. Plus, I also made five other videos that break down the different skills of the course and walk you through different FRQ practice questions. All to help you get more familiar with the task verbs, the FRQs, and just AP Human Geography tests in general. You can find the videos and practice resources in my exam Slayer, along with a bunch of other testing strategies and also practice. Oh, and as an added bonus, I also made FRQs for each unit. Practice multiple choice tests for each unit and added a custom built exam simulator that lets you take these tests digitally and breaks down the results for you. But more on that later on. Now before we move on from task verbs, I also want to encourage you to talk to your teacher before your first FRQ. Ask your teacher if there's any specific task verbs that won't be on the first FRQ. For example, many teachers don't ask explain the degree on the first unit exam, since it is one of the hardest questions you can get. Understanding how your teacher is going to format the FRQ FRQ will help you refine your studies to make sure you're accurately preparing for your test. Okay, so that's the basics of the FRQs. We went over the types of FRQs, the format, and talked about the different task verbs. Now, we are going to go over the concepts that might be on your first test. But before we do, I want to actually encourage you to ask your teacher about how they want you to format your answers, which depending on your FRQ, whether it be digital or paper, actually may vary. I know for me and my students, I always recommended that students answer an FRQ in order and clearly mark each answer. And when I say order, I don't mean the order of the questions. I mean the parts of an FRQ. I would have my students pick which FRQ they are going to answer first. Mark the number on the top of their paper. After that, my students would write A on the left side of the page and then write out the answer. 
Once they're done, then they would go down a line and put B and then write the answer for part B. Remember with FRQs, there's seven points, one for each part. By organizing the answers this way, it made it very clear exactly which part of the FRQ the student is answering, which as a student is what you want. The last thing you want to have happen is all of your answers are in this massive essay and your teacher or the reader who's grading it can't actually find your answer, resulting in you losing points. Again though, make sure you talk to your teacher here to better understand exactly how they want you to format your answers. And be aware that some teachers will deduct points if you do not follow their format. Also, if your teacher does this, realize they're not trying to be mean, they're just trying to make sure that you learn how to answer these questions for the AP exam come May. All right, so hopefully you feel better now about what to expect with the FRQ itself. We are going to shift gears now and talk about a couple concepts that you for sure want to review for your FRQ before you take that unit one test. Okay, so quick disclaimer, I don't know what your teacher will put on the exam, but I can make some pretty good educated guesses. To start, I would make sure to review the big overarching concepts in this unit. These are the concepts that connect easily to other concepts, making them a great option for an FRQ, such as the types of regions, types of maps, scale of analysis, and human environment interaction. I know for me, I frequently have these concepts on my first FRQ, as they not only connect to the different concepts in the first unit, but also come back in later units as well. If you need help reviewing these concepts, you can check out my topic review videos on YouTube, or if you want a more focused review on these topics, you can actually check out the exclusive videos inside my ultimate review packet that review and break down these concepts even further. I also added in my ultimate review packet practice quizzes for each of these topics. And each quiz comes with an answer key that has explanations, explaining why each answer is either right or wrong, allowing you to truly understand the topics. Remember, if any of this sounds interesting to you, you can actually check out a free preview of the ultimate review packet today by clicking the link down below. Now, speaking of overarching concepts, make sure you're on the lookout for these in every unit. You'll often find FRQs in your class that focus on models, theories, and larger concepts. Also make sure you pay attention in class. Oftentimes teachers may make their FRQs on concepts that they covered in depth in class or went over multiple times. Something that I definitely didn't do to my students, especially for the first FRQ. It's great to see who's paying attention. I would also make sure you spend some time understanding the vocab of this unit. It is actually pretty common that you'll see vocab pop up, not just on the first FRQ, but for your multiple choice tests as well. Prepping for the vocab will help you prep for the FRQ and the multiple choice portion. Don't forget when studying the vocab to be on the lookout for terms that are similar. Concepts such as environmental determinism and possibilism, qualitative and quantitative, scale and scale of analysis, absolute and relative location or distance, just to name a few, often get put together. And they can come up on an FRQ as a compare question, which will actually check to see do you truly know the difference between these terms. So so that is some of the concepts that I would review. Now, if you really want to reduce your stress before your first FRQ, the best thing you can do is practice. You can actually Google past AP Hug FRQs and find a bunch of FRQs that you can use as practice. Plus, you can also find the keys for all the FRQs to grade your own work. I'd really recommend looking at the key after taking a practice exam, since it'll not only let you check your work, but it'll also let you get a good feel for the types of answers your teacher may be looking for. Now, if you don't want to try to find FRQs, FRQs to practice with on your own, you can go to my exam slayer where you'll find three FRQs for unit one. Each comes with seven parts, so it's seven points, and has an AI grader to give you feedback on your work. In the exam slayer, you'll also get access to exclusive videos that break down the FRQs, the core skills, the highlight videos, which covers the brain busters and easy pickings from each unit. Plus, you also get access to full unit practice exams, which you can take with our custom exam simulator, allowing you to take the unit exam exams just like a real AP test. And the best part is, once you finish the exam, you can see a full breakdown of your score, showing you exactly which topics in a unit you actually need to study, how long you spent on each question, and explanations for each question as well. All of which allows you to see where you need to focus your studies on, resulting in you becoming more efficient in your studies, and of course, rocking that unit exam. 
All right, well, there you have it. If you do have any questions about your first FRQ or your first unit exam, let me know in the comment section down below. Or feel free to join my free Discord server and ask one of the thousands of students or teachers on there for help as well. Good luck on your first unit exam, geographer. I know you're gonna crush it. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online.